Welcome to another episode of 256 Seconds with Donna Dave. I'm David McCarter. I'm glad you're back. I told you it wouldn't be so long since the last one, and it hasn't been. It's only been a couple weeks. In this episode, I'm going to talk about an article uh, that I'm releasing on csharpcorner.com and also on my website called Improve Your Model Classes with Object-Oriented Programming, Part 1, The Basics. And the reason I came up with this was because of questions I'm getting from interns and junior programmers in the team I'm currently contracting with. Their first question was basically how to properly design model classes. Uh, we use NAD Framework on these projects a lot, so we have a lot of model classes. I thought I'd do a series of articles and a series of videos um, to how to properly design classes with object-oriented programming in mind from the ground up. So if you read the beginning of the article, it shows you a bad code example. And then we start talking about encapsulation, which is the first pillar of object-oriented programming. And you've got to get this right. And in my book, if you can't, then I have little hope that inheritance and polymorphism won't be done correctly either. So the whole thing about encapsulation is data hiding. The data that your model class contains should only be accessed through properties and methods. That's it. No public fields ever, ever, ever. Actually, you shouldn't do that in any class. But with uh, model classes, you definitely should not do that. The class we're going to, and if you read the article, I do talk about encapsulation. I give the proper definition. And then I go into data hiding, and then I talk about um, the first major concept with this article, and that's validating the data. So if you look at a lot of model classes, they probably look like this. And here's the type we're going to be using through these series of articles called person. And we have address one and ID and born on, things like that. So this is typically what I see with model classes. And this is not object-oriented programming. Um, yes, you're using properties, which is better than fields, but the big thing here is you're not validating the data, and that's the big thing with encapsulation. You don't let bad data into your type. Bad data in, bad data out. And if that bad data gets to the database, it's very difficult to uh, uh, fix it and very costly. So let's look how we would do person correctly. So here's my person class um, that I fixed for this article. It has proper documentation uh, that StyleCop likes. And I use a program called GhostDoc uh, to do this. It's free. It's an extension to Visual Studio. And why you're not using it is beyond me. But anyway, I document everything, including fields. Um, so let's look at address one. So here's address one. It's a property, which is proper object only programming. But the encapsulation part is in the set. So you can see here. I'm, I'm checking to make sure the values aren't the same, you know, the value being sent in isn't the address one that's already there. Because why set it if it's already there? And this becomes more important with uh, programs like written in WPF because uh, typically uh, in a lot of uh, programs like that, when a value changes, you also throw an event. So um, this prevents that uh, for the future. So. Might as well just do it in the beginning. You can see here on the, on the next um, if statement, I'm checking is null or empty. And if it is, I'm, pr I'm throwing the proper exception, which is argument null exception. Because if it's null or empty, you know, we don't want to set address. And then uh, number three here is really the most, the most important part is uh, making sure address one is in the length uh, that the business rules define it as. And usually it's the business rules and or uh, the configuration in the database. So in this instance, I'm making sure the address is uh, not under 10 characters and not over 256 characters. If they are, then I throw argument out of range exception. If they're not, then I set address and everybody's happy. If you look at the rest of the class, it's almost exactly the same thing except for born on. And uh, I'm making sure that everything is in the proper range before I set it. This is how you do encapsulation. And like I said, you can also use uh, methods. But for model classes, you're really using properties. So for these series of articles, we're going to, to do, uh, be using a lot of properties. 
So that's pretty much it for this article. It's just to show you how to do proper encapsulation with validation. So are we done? No, we're not. Uh, there's still a couple more things we need to do to this type uh, to make it better. And uh, we'll tackle that in the next article and in the next video. I hope you got something out of this. I hope this explained the article better, or maybe the article explains this better. Uh, please let me know uh, how you like this uh, video for the article. If you have any burning questions about .NET, please email me. Uh, if I use your question in an article, I will send you a .NETtips.com coffee mug anywhere in the world, wherever you live. I will send it to you. Please send me your questions and comments to donetdave at live.com. And with that, I'll see you next time on 256 Seconds with Donet Dave.